Good morning, Lord Diesel. Lord of all weasels. Absolutely, man. All of them. Thank you, boys. How you doing, bud? How you doing? You actually like the camera today? These people smell very nice. Well, that's nice of you to compliment them. That's nice. How come you never say that about me? Diesel. Well, I'll say good morning to everybody. Everybody likes it when you're in the video. Everybody likes it when you're here. Come well, on, give him a smile. Come here, you shy boy. <laughs> Don't like the camera, man. So good morning, everybody. Uh, we're here in Black River Falls, Wisconsin. And uh, we're headed home slowly. Today we have six and a half hours or so available to us to drive because we're recapping hours. So we're not going to quite make it, but we're going to get close to the Canadian border. And tomorrow we're uh, delivering this load into Headingley. Uh, that'll be on Wednesday. So then uh, once that's delivered, I take the trailer back to our, our yard. And then I go home for day and a half to two days it's just gonna be a shorter time at home this time unfortunately but uh, I got to get back to work and we'll take more time off uh, beginning of June work 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 if there's work to be done we better do it this truck's dinging at me because it wants me to leave already it's getting impatient here we go time to get back to work be a full day of driving to get back if we had that many hours available to us on our 70 on our 70 hour clock uh, it's eight and a half hours just to get to the border and I have six and a half hours available to me today I mean I could do the other bit after midnight I guess I guess we could do that my delivery appointment is for two o'clock p.m. tomorrow so I've got to make sure that I uh, Obviously, they're on time. We'd like to be there around 1.30, 1.45. If I get to town even earlier than that, that's fine. they got a lot of truck stops right in Headingley right there where I can wait. I'll probably be there earlier. I'll give them a call. Maybe they'll unload me earlier then. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. All you got to do is ask really nicely. through Minneapolis St. Paul here on uh, Interstate 694 going around the north side of the city traffic isn't too bad got a lot of construction going on here again but what's new there right I believe this lane to my right is ending right away if not I'd like to get moved over but I don't want to move over just to move right back into this lane you know go over this hill here and see what's going on down the hill so far it looks like it's not in okay we'll take the risk we'll take the risk we'll move over gotta get my hat off the dash so there's blocking that mirror I don't know why I put that there there we go I like to be able to see all my mirrors I think uh, that's pretty normal you know one thing I, another thing I love about this truck is it has a temperature setting where I can set it to uh, well it's all in Fahrenheit because all vehicles they're made in the <laughs> these trucks are made and put together in the USA and they go by Fahrenheit which makes no sense to me really 
the, the system doesn't make sense. And when they sell their trucks in Canada, all they do is they change the speedometer to kilometers an hour, but they don't change anything else. So everything like engine temperature, oil temperature, uh, cabin temperature, it's all in Fahrenheit. But anyways, I can sort of understand both. So I can set it to like 70 Fahrenheit. Two kilometers, keep to the left on I-694. I set the truck to 70 Fahrenheit and uh, just put it to auto. And it keeps the cabin temperature at a steady 70 degrees. It either like, activates the cool or the heat. I usually like it at about 72. But it's all depending on the day. Whenever it's colder outside, I like the truck to be warmer. And whenever it's hotter outside, I like the inside of the truck to be cooler. It's just kind of nice though that I don't constantly have to fiddle with the climate control. It does it for me. Uh, this is where my lane is ending up here. You see my signal there, buddy? There you go. Thank you. Give you the little flash ruse there to say thank you. There you go, hopefully you know what those mean. Sometimes I wonder if like when you say thank you to other drivers on the highway by like, flashing your four ways, I wonder if they know what you're doing or if they're like, what's this guy doing? What's he trying to tell me? I'm trying to say thank you. In 400 meters, keep to the left on by 694. So it's, I'm pretty sure we can make it to Fargo. We've got four hours and 19 minutes available to us today yet to drive. So definitely not gonna make it to the border. And I already told you, right, that I have a delivery appointment tomorrow at 2 p.m. And right now it's looking like I'll probably be in Winnipeg around 10, 10.30. So I may give them a call and see if they wouldn't mind, if it's convenient for them, if they'd wanna unload me a little earlier. If not, well, then I guess we'll just go and grab lunch in Headingley. I know my in-laws, uh, they live in Headingley. Maybe I'll call them up, see if they want to meet up for lunch if I have time. I first have to see if they'll unload me earlier or not. And then we head home and we got a bunch of work to do once we get home. A lot of work to do. We got to, uh, underneath our veranda, we got squirrels that are starting to make nests. I'll have to show you when I get home, and it's not good. It's not good. We've been trying to trap them and uh, release them back into the wild far away from home. That hasn't worked, so we've been trying other means, and we've been trying everything to get them to stay away, and they won't stay away. They keep coming back, and it doesn't matter how many you take out and get rid of. That guy's got a flat tire. I <laughs> hope he sees the smoke coming out of there. Anyways. Yeah, no matter what we do, they keep coming back. So we've got to close off their, uh, where they're getting underneath our veranda. So that's the project for this home time. And the next time I'm home, we're installing that back door on our house. And I'd also like to get started on building a little, well, a large fenced in area for our dogs to be in outside when we would like to give them some time in the sun, but don't necessarily uh, want to keep an eye on them as closely as we usually would. Your signal's on, buddy. Are you coming in here or not? I gave you space. Okay, now you want to come in. Okay. Seriously, what took you so long, bud? Saskatchewan plates. Tell you what. Oh, yeah, other than that, I am scheduled to uh, go back out Friday night or Saturday morning, uh, whenever they have something for me. It won't be quite as long as this trip, but I got a good two weeks before I need to be back next, and then we'll be back for uh, a few days. Yeah, this is Minneapolis. How many of you live in Minneapolis or St. Paul? These highways look familiar to you? So we're here in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Gonna quickly grab some fuel, grab a coffee, head on down the road. Looks like we should have just enough hours to make it. Maybe past Fargo a little bit. Probably to Fargo though. That's fine, we can get home from there tomorrow. This truck still smells like smoke. It's been almost three weeks. And I've had air fresheners in here. I've tried a couple of your suggestions, try to get rid of that smell. It just soaks into the fabric of everything. It gets, uh, you could tell that whoever smoked in here smoked while they were driving because this whole dashboard, I had to wash it off. And this window, when I cleaned it off, it had a yellow film on it. The whole dashboard, everything was just caked with this yellow tar-like film that I had to wipe off. And then the steering wheel I've wiped and like disinfected every day already. 
every day. And still, when I hold my hands on here like this, after a couple of hours of driving, my hands smell like smoke. It just creeps into everything and it sticks around forever. We're about an hour from Fargo, North Dakota, which is the border with North Dakota, if you're not familiar with the area. Uh, we're still in Minnesota. We're gonna be stopping there. Uh, we'll probably have about 20 minutes left on my clock then, so right about where I figured we'd make it to. So we'll probably go to the Flying J or the Loves there find us a good parking spot and uh, shut her down for the night. It'll be about 7.30, 7 o'clock, 7.15, somewhere in there, between 7 and 7.30 in the evening and uh, probably leave there around, I'd say, between 6 and 7 a.m. There's two and a half hours to the Canadian border and then another hour and a half or hour and a bit to Winnipeg and Headingley. An hour and a half to Headingley where I gotta unload. Three and a half hours, four hours. If I leave at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, that gets me into Winnipeg and Headingley there around eleven. So I don't even have to leave that early. I could leave at eight, get there at noon. My appointment's not till two p.m. So man, I could stay till nine if I wanted to. Maybe I don't have to get up so early. But either way, I do have to get this trailer unloaded at two p.m. tomorrow. and then uh, head on home. It'll be really nice to go home, even if it's just for a short while. I wish it was a little bit longer, but we gotta keep these wheels turning. If there's freight to move, and we got a heartbeat, we may as well, we may as well be moving freight, right? We're gonna take off a little bit longer time, uh, beginning of June. Beautiful day up here though, look at this. It's 24 degrees Celsius up here right now. That's just a little cooler than it was in Georgia. Almost the same. Summer is just around the corner now. Now all we need to do is open everything up. And it's gonna be a great summer. So I changed my mind. I stopped here in Ross, say Minnesota instead. This is another common stop for us. You guys all know this place. I'll stay here instead. It's a, it's a quieter parking lot than the Flying J in Fargo. And I also got backed into once in Fargo at the Flying J, so I don't like stopping there now. It gives me bad vibes. Pull in here and this will be the end of our day. We'll get going uh, early tomorrow morning from here. Have a nice quiet night here though. It's a little bit more of a you know, slower pace truck stop. Not so busy. Trucks flying in and out all the time. And here we go guys, another really short day, I know. I had this guy nose in beside me, which is awesome, so I'm not even gonna have him idling his engine right beside me. That's fantastic. I can't idle this engine anyway because they have an idle shut down. After like five minutes, it shuts down. Unless the temperature goes above uh, 27 degrees Celsius outside, it'll stay running, or below five degrees Celsius, it'll stay running. And that's for health and safety reasons, I mean, you can't expect us to sit in a truck that's like almost 30 degrees Celsius, that's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and just cook. Like, we would cook from the inside out, pretty much. And if it's below 5 degrees, I mean, this truck has a bunk heater, so you don't really need it. But if it goes down to minus 25, minus 30, well, then you're also going to need to keep the engine running so it doesn't freeze solid overnight. So there. You sort of got to give and take a little bit, I guess, but... Anyways, I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, I'm just gonna edit today's video, throw it together, and uh, get an early night. Get a really good sleep tonight, and uh, tomorrow we will be off and running. I'm gonna deliver this load, and we're gonna go home and get to work at home. Hope you tune in. I'll see you tomorrow.